Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're trying something different. We're shooting on film. So I've been a photographer for over four years and I've never shot on anything but digital. Phone cameras, bridge cameras, point and shoot, DSLRs. So one of my favorite eras of fashion photography is the 90s supermodel era. I'm super inspired by great photographers like Steven Meisel, Herb Ritz, Peter Lindbergh, and they all would have shot on film at that time. So I've set myself the challenge of shooting on film for the very first time in the studio. How it's gonna come out, I have no idea. But if you wanna find out, just keep on watching. Okay, so let's talk cameras. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I usually shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV. But today, we're sticking within the Canon family and we're shooting with the Canon AE-1 program. So this is a 35 millimeter SLR camera that I got as a gift for my birthday. It came in the original box from 1981 and it came with the manual and the receipts from where it was purchased and everything. So it's in great condition. The lens I have on here is a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and 50 mil is a bit of a safe focal length for me. I prefer to shoot something a little bit wider for more of an exaggerated look. Something between 35 and 50, but I couldn't really find any lenses for this camera at the time online. So this is what we're working with today. Now I'm sure fashion would have been shot on a medium format camera, something like a Pentax 67 or a Mamiya RZ67, but that bigger medium format size comes with a bigger medium format price tag. And as it's my first time, I thought I'd try something more accessible and more affordable. So the film stock I'm shooting with is Portra 160. I went with this because I'm in the studio. I don't think I need a higher ISO film like Portra 400 or 800. So this is what I'm working with. And there's 36 exposures per roll. Hey guys, so I'm in the studio. We've got two models coming in today and we're doing like a whole 80s inspired shoot. So we've got 80s inspired hair, makeup, styling and also some slightly 80s inspired lighting so it should be really fun i'm really excited let's see what happens So I don't have a light meter and they're surprisingly expensive. So I decided to use my digital camera to measure the light. So because the film is Portra 160, you'd usually want to set the ISO on the digital camera to 160 as well to measure the light. But I did a bit of research and people were saying that Portra film looks better slightly overexposed rather than underexposed. So I measured the light at ISO 100. That way, once the 160 film is developed, it should have a slightly overexposed look rather than being too dark. Now I set my shutter speed on the AE-1 to 1 60th of a second. Now this is much slower than usual because the Canon 5D has a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. But the Canon AE-1 has a slower shutter sync speed so I set it to 1 60 and you can tell what the sync speed is because it's got a little flash symbol next to the 60 on the dial. I kept my aperture at f11 for both cameras just to make sure that everything was in focus.
So shooting analog is a much slower process. There's no autofocus and you have to advance the roll in between each shot. So I noticed it was a bit tiring for the models because they had to hold the pose while I was trying to get that sharp focus. But I just love how tactile the whole analog experience is. From loading the film to actually feeling the mirror and the shutter moving within the camera, the sound and the feel of the film advance lever, it's all really quite refreshing. You know, you know what it is. What's up? I mean, you, don't, you don't know who it is. <laughs> Tom Bai, you know who? <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about lighting. I've gone with a slightly 80s inspired setup today. My main light is a Profoto D2 with this deep parabolic softbox. This light has a nice deep round shape and it comes with a reflector panel to eliminate any hot spots. It then has two layers of diffusion fabric to make the light really soft, but I removed one at the front to just give it a bit more contrast. As usual, I have two lights on the background, one on each side. These are making the background white, but I can turn them down and make the background more gray as well. And then to add that extra 80s flair, I've added a fourth light behind the model with an orange gel to act as a hair light. <laughs> So I wasn't sure how I was going to trigger the flash with the Canon AE-1. I thought I might have to use a PC sync cable or maybe find some other kind of workaround. But just like normal, I just put my Profoto Air Remote into the hot shoe and it works. Now, halfway through the shoot, we ran into a major problem. At the end of the first roll, I was winding the film back and suddenly it stopped winding and I was so confused, I thought I'd broken the camera. So I kept winding, kept winding, it wasn't going anywhere and I had to see what was going on inside. So I put the camera inside of a suitcase to try and make it as dark as possible because I had to open the back to see what was going on. And unfortunately, I had been winding it the wrong way. So I quickly closed the camera, managed to wind it back the right way. But as you know, film is sensitive to light. So if any light hits the film, it's going to ruin your images. But fortunately, the damage was not too bad. We only lost a couple of frames. So for this next lighting setup, I wanted to go for a hard light on camera flash sort of look. So I went for a Profoto D2 with a zoom reflector and I positioned it just above the camera. I love these shots here. They just feel so playful and nostalgic and that was really the mood that I was going for. I am so in love with these photos, the hair, the makeup, the styling, but the film is just giving it that extra effect that I wanted. It's just giving me that 80s Vogue magazine vibe that I love. So we can't talk about film photography without talking about the cost. So in terms of the cost of film developing and scans, this five pack of Portra was 50 pounds, so that's 10 pounds each. I shot two rolls, 
The cost of developing and scanning the rolls is £14 each. I also paid £4 each for a express service and then I paid £7 to post them special delivery to the lab. I also paid £2 for the negatives to be mailed back to me once they've been developed. So overall, the cost for the film, developing and scanning was £65 for two rolls. So with this portrait film, I get 36 exposures per roll. But if I was shooting on medium format 120 film, it'll be even more expensive per photo because you get less exposures per roll. So what do I think? Overall, I think it was a good experience and I'd love to play around a bit more with the film format. Although my style is quite modern, I do really appreciate the effect that film gives, especially in the studio. So I will probably continue to use one roll here or there alongside my digital work. Hopefully I can try medium format as well soon. So let me know your thoughts. Do you shoot film, digital, both? Which do you prefer? Why? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more of my work and some behind the scenes content, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ian Hippo. I want to give a massive shout out to the team on this shoot. They're all so talented and I've linked all their Instagrams down below. So make sure you check them out. That's it guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I just love it. It's just so like, Listen to it, hear, hear this. Ooh, come on. It just sounds so good. Okay, that's enough. I don't want to break it, it's old. <laughs>